so uh, we're excited. This is going to be uh, episode one of our Creativity in the Valley podcast. Uh, today I have uh, Brian Walters with me. Brian, thank you for coming by. So before we start um, talking about Brian and you know why he's here and everything like that, I want to ask Brian kind of about Auto Valley Studios, uh, why, why we have it now, what the, the whole aspect of Auto Valley Studios is, and uh, just kind of go into detail about you know why, why we're doing this now. What's the, what's the deal? So Brian, you know? What's, what's the deal with Ottawa Valley Studios? Ottawa Valley Studios <coughs> was uh, a brilliant idea. <laughs> yes. It was. <clears throat> so the Ottawa Valley Studios formed when we were looking for a shared studio space. Yep. Yep. Um, there was a couple of photographers in the area. We're all running full-time photography businesses out of our basements. And we all realized very quickly that there wasn't enough room, space. Yeah. So uh, we started looking. We did. For spaces. Yes. For months. For months. Janu I think we started looking in January, right? Yeah. When, when did we get together for our workshop? It was January when we started talking about the workshop, right? Yep. So January, we started looking. When did we finally find a place? Oh, I don't even remember when it was, but it was a long time. I do. All I do because right. it was six months of my life yeah. spent trying to find. So June is when we actually finally found a place. Yeah, and it was torn apart. Yes. Totally gutted, but we knew immediately that this was the place as soon as we walked in. The bones were here, it was good to go, and now this is the perfect place. It is, absolutely. So, so oh, sorry. No, I was going to say everyone's happy, you're happy, I'm happy, John's happy. John's behind the camera there recording us right yeah, now. Yeah, doing a great job. <laughs> He's happy. And uh, yeah, we love the space and all the clients love the space. There's so much more room and, you know, there's a kitchen here. There's and a kitchen, yeah. Nice bathroom, so it's a really nice place. And it is a really nice place. Everyone enjoys it. So. Yeah, and obviously you can go visit uh, autovalleystudios.com. You get a chance to kind of see what the rates are for renting the space um, and you get use of all of the equipment that's here, all the backdrops. Everything, everything that we have here is available to uh, not only photographers, but I mean, any, anybody that wants, wants a space to use for, if you want to teach cooking classes, heck, you could even do them here kind yep. of deal, right? So, yep. uh, I mean, obviously it's a, great, uh, it's a great little spot that we have. Um, it's like 1,100 square feet, I think, eh? Yeah, about that. And it's, uh, it's a good place. So, you know, it's yourself, me and John that, uh, that, are, that are using it right now. But again, we obviously don't mind other people if they want to come and, sure. and check it out. And, and use the space because it's, it's awesome. All right, cool. So now we're going to get into the fun part of, uh, of today. So what, what I'm going to be talking to you about, uh, Brian, is kind of creativity. We're going to go into, you know, kind of the aspects of why being a photographer can be such a creative outlet. Um, and we kind of want to figure out what it is that makes you tick in those kind of lines, right? Mm -hmm. So are you ready for my, my, my top five list with a bonus <laughs> question here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm as ready as I'm ever. Gonna we're, we're, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna we're gonna go into a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So, my number one question is, you know, do you strive to be unique in all your creative endeavors? Do I strive to be unique? Yeah. Yeah. You have to. Yep. Okay. Kind of explain though, like expand I on, on <laughs> expand so, on that. So, if you're not going to be creative or unique with photography, you are going to get lumped in with everybody who just pulls their camera out and does snaps. Yeah. So um, with uh, today's technology, with all the great cameras they have that are really cheap and mobile phones with great cameras on them, like all kinds of people are taking great snaps. Yeah, well you your know? iPhone 6 can, I mean that's a... For sure, and some of the best photos I've ever taken <laughs> are, are on my phone, yeah. right? So, but... It's uh, much more difficult, close to impossible to get really creative with, uh, with those kind of cameras because you need to be able to control different aspects like you know, your, your ISO and your shutter speed yeah. and you know, your f-stop. So if, uh, if you can't control those things, it's really hard to get creative, yep. but you can just take great photos. Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to clients that are paying you to make like amazing photographs, yep. Um, they're expecting amazing photographs, so you, you have to be outside the box and you have to be able to provide things that other people can't, yeah. right? So. And so, so with that, I'm just going to cut to one of the wedding shots you did here. Um, you took this in Jamaica, I believe, right? Tell me a little bit about this shot. Uh, this shot here was taken at 
Rachel and Joel's wedding in Ocho Rios, Jamaica, two years ago. And uh, it's one of my favorite images for, uh, for a couple different reasons. Um, the moon was shot the night before from my hotel room where uh, I just saw it yeah. and saw it was, it was so awesome. Yeah. And awesome moons are so hard to capture. And we were up on the top floor. Everything was perfect. The clouds are perfect. So uh, I took the moon. I never knew what I was going to do with it until um, during the day, we took this exact same shot in the daytime. And then at night, I wanted to recreate the shot we did during the day at night yep. with, uh, with some nice backlighting from yep. my off camera flash. Yep. And that's, I'm just gonna answer, that's, that's, one of the, that's one of the nice things, Brian, that I find that as a wedding photographer, you do a really good job of if, is, you know, if you go and look at a lot of your, your evening images with your, with your couples, you do a lot of good backlighting with, with your off camera flash, right? Um, and this I'm assuming you're using a trigger for, right? Yes, is, yep. is how you're doing it. And you, you know, again, I look at that as a very creative side of it is, is you know, yeah, people can do that, but your your vision, your eye of it, you saw it, you kind of knew what you wanted to, to do with it, right? And that's a that's a really good uh, that's a really good image. So, you know, that's a good one. But I did forget to ask, you know, one question before I started on this is I didn't I didn't ask about you. I didn't ask about Brian. I didn't say like, hey, what's Brian all about, right? So let's uh, let's do a little bit of that. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about you for a bit, Brian. So you know, <laughs> sure. Tell tell me about you. It's like a job interview now. You're like, no, tell me a little bit about you. Um, you know how we ended, you ended up kind of getting where you are and how you get started and all that kind of stuff, you know? All right, well, it all started with little baby Brian. No, no, really. It, um, yeah, that's me in one photo, that's that is for you. sure. That is you, can you see that, can you see that photo? Uh, oh, we have, we have an image of your family, right? <clears throat> yeah, so that's myself, my wife, Nicole, my son, Noah, and my other son, Jude who are now seven and four. Yep. And that, uh, that pretty much sums me up. Um, yeah, that's why I do, I do everything I do. And that's how I actually got into photography. I think that's how most people get into photography. Yeah. I, when Noah was just little, he, uh, every time I tried to take photos of him, they were all blurry and mangled, and I was so upset because yeah. such great moments were, were ruined by, by blurry photos. By, by your lack of understanding. <laughs> by my lack of understanding, but at the time, I thought it was my lack of equipment, yeah. right? So the first thing I did was go and buy a professional DSR, DSLR camera, and uh, yeah, it turned out that didn't make any difference. Nope. <laughs> so spent like $500 on an, on an entry-level camera, and quickly realized that it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. So I took a course on how to use it. And by the time I was finished that course, I, I understood so much more to the point where I just wanted to learn more. Yeah. And it just exploded from there. Like I just couldn't get enough information and that's all I concentrated on was learning how to take better photos. Yeah. And then at that point I started looking at photographs that I loved and was trying to figure out how they did it. Like how did they do that? That's always, it's, it's always an interesting thing because you know, I think as photographers or, or just people that are visually stimulating is when you see an image, you are always trying in the back of your head trying to figure out how did they take that image, right? That's right? I know when I'm, I know when I'm looking at a photo, I, I'm always looking at lighting. You know, how how did they light that photo? What, how many how many setups did they use? You know, was it was it yeah. was it studio lighting? Was it like an off camera flash? Like all these kind of things, right? So it's very and much. Now about at that. this point where you are, you could probably nail down exactly what kind of and where <laughs> the lights are, yeah. what the settings were on the camera. Yeah. Like, so mm. that brings me to the point of the art versus science, yeah. right? So as growing up as a kid, I was very much into art. I was never really good at it, but I love painting and I love drawing. I love music. I was, I was into all that art stuff. Um, I was always like, like pretty good, but I was surrounded by phenomenal artists. Yeah. So it's hard to, it's hard to just go further like with my painting and drawing when I saw people that were like gifted. Yeah. They were just gifted. I knew I was, no, no, no amount of practice gets you as good as somebody who has a natural gift. So I still did it for fun and, and I just loved art 
and I love science. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much a geek. <laughs> so, so I love my art and I love my science and that's really where photography shines for me mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter how creative or artistic you are, if you do not understand how your camera works, yeah. you're done. Yeah, absolutely. Because you could have a vision, but if you can't figure out how to put it on paper, then, then it's useless, yeah. right? If you can't figure out you know, how to set up your camera and how to set up the lights yeah. and, and just make things happen. So I think that's the advantage that I had with being able to pick everything up so quickly, yeah. is that I quickly learned and fully understood how cameras work. Like I needed to know the math and the science behind. Yep. There, and you know, it, it is a funny thing because when you think about um, your camera, I mean, there's actually a lot of math behind taking a picture, right? Sure. There, there's, there yeah. is actual equations, you know, that you could write down to, to tell yourself how to do everything. It's, yeah, I'm it's not that possible, hardcore. but you know. I just <laughs> like understand like lighting and the sensor yeah. and shutter speed and yeah. You just have to understand that. Mm -hmm. And every time I got a new camera, I would I would always read the manual. And if I didn't know something, then I would look it up. Yeah. So, you know, knowing what every single thing inside your camera and every setting is, like, helps. Yeah. You know, and most people, it's just too much trouble, right? Yeah. They just want to pull up the camera, shoot, and take pretty pictures. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't work like that. you got to understand the science to be able to control your creative you know, outlet. Yeah. So, and your family obviously fully supports you in this uh, this endeavor. I'm assuming, right? It's the only way it works. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Absolutely. You Maybe not my kids so much because, like, when the camera comes out, they hide. But yeah. once in a while, I get lucky, and uh, and my wife, of course, like such a huge supporter. That yeah. And that that does. I think I think that's a key. It is to, key to being successful in a creative kind of endeavor. Is the people around you have to support that vision and that what, what you kind of want to do, right? Oh, it's a slow start. Yeah, you absolutely. know, like you've done it too. You know, you don't just start out rocking out beautiful images. Yeah. Like there's, <laughs> there's it does, it takes time. Absolutely. So. Okay, well, now I'm going to go on to my six, second uh, creative question is, who or what experience have kind of inspired your work in, 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 the, in the line of photography? Well, I, like a lot of that's my kids too, yep. right? Like different places, different things, seeing them, interacting. So your kids is really his, what's kind of, that's really what's kind of pushed you to, to do what you do then kind of thing, right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay, yeah. that's fair enough. I'm kind of the same way, you know? Um, kids were a big thing. It was, I think, when family stuff started happening that you really kind of go back and be like, you want to do... Well, when you look at your children, um, and that's when I realized very quickly that window light was by far the best light was because my kids, they would always be looking out the window and stuff, and I would look at them from a certain angle and be like, that is perfect. Yeah. Like that's, you know, that's inspiring. Like I'm gonna go grab my camera, yeah. and then when I come back, of course, they're playing with Legos somewhere else, but, <laughs> then, Legos, right? but then I'll get them to look out the window again and get that shot, and, and that's kind of the lighting that window light will give you. Absolutely, you know, I mean, you do, you go back to this family picture, and. Um, now I know that that's a studio. I know that's a strobe yeah. light that's being used. But I mean, a lot of people might not know that you could very well do that that's in front the of a window, of right? Window light, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely. And I tell even my clients, like if they want nice pictures of their kids or their baby, like put them right near the window. If you can get your children to look out the window at something, yep, and shoot them from the side, they uh, they always look really great. And and, and it's, it is a great image. It's a great image of your family. So I'm going to go on to um, my next one is. When was the first time you remember realizing that you were a creative person? Uh, see, I never really thought about it as a kid, or even in high school, or even like when I was in the music. Actually, you know what? Probably started when I was in the music industry. Yep. Where um, it's very much like photography, being a record producer or recording engineer. It's very, very close to being a photographer, right? You're relying on other people to finish your work, right? Like the band or whoever's playing the instruments yep. are kind of like the clients you're photographing, so you need their help. Instead of pictures, as though, much. you're capturing the audio, right? So it's... That's right. Yeah, but absolutely. it's the same thing. You've got to get people to relax and loosen up. And um, So back then, I understood that you could get creative with, with audio. And that's very much what I liked about that whole industry. Yeah. And and then when it came into photography, I just found that the images that I liked but was unable to produce early on 
were always like really creative ones. Yep. Things that needed additional lighting or yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, or yep. different textures. So, so then I'm going to go into uh, one that I find as a photographer is kind of it's 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 a key. It's it's your it's your creative block, <laughs> right? So. How do you deal with creative blocks? And we're going to talk about this image while you kind of explain what you do to kind of get out of that. I just keep my eyes open. Like, it doesn't matter. See, I've never really been in a place, and I hear about it all the time, from, mostly from writers. Yeah. But once in a while, there'll be an article about photographers, about the creative block. And I don't even mm. read them because I've really never been in a spot where I'm like, I'm at a loss. Yeah. I got nothing. Okay. Well, that's, that, that's a good thing because, you know, this image we have up right now, um, this, is, this is a local vendor that we've all had the pleasure of working with, yes. right? This yeah. Is Kim yeah, Chenard. Kim Chenard from Crazy Beautiful Dresses and Decor. <coughs> yep. Yeah. Um, and this, to, this is a creative shoot. So, you know, kind of explain how this image came about because um, the chandelier is, is an awesome addition to this shot. Yes. And just kind of go into this image and how it kind of came about. All right, uh, so the image was taken from a series of great images that I did with, uh, with Kim at her studio. And it was an Alice in Wonderland theme shoot. She had a beautiful dress and these amazing shoes and we were supposed to do an event together. It didn't fall through. So because of she, she had put so much time and work into it and I had put so much time and work into it that I just went to her bridal studio yep. and we just went from there. Mm. So the first thing you notice when you walk in her bridal shop is this amazing chandelier yes. that she has hanging above um, three mirrors. mirrors. <laughs> and I didn't know what or how I was going to use the chandelier because it's up really, really high. Yep. And about halfway through the shoot, we came back downstairs and I just kept looking at the chandelier and I knew I had to do something with it. So, uh, yeah, we got out a ladder and I was right at the very top of the ladder shooting through because I knew that I needed to shoot through it. And yep. she just, uh, yeah, she just rocked it. Yeah, she did. You know what she, I mean? She did rock it. And so if, if, if other people are interested in seeing these images, are they on your website? Can they take a look at these more? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so these are in my portfolio. They're under, in the portfolio? Uh, yeah, under portraits for this one. So make sure you take a, a moment to go check out uh, that's, that session with Kim because it is, it is quite, uh, it is quite the, the session that you did with her and it's awesome. Well, and you just got to look for the things around you. Yeah. Right? Like that's how you don't get blocked. Like you see something you like, use it. Yep. You know? And then this kinda, that kind of leads into the next question is, is there anything special that you do to get into a creative mindset? Yeah, um, I just feel like I, it's it's almost always there. It's almost always there. Like when you go outside, are you not, like when you look at the sky or you look at the way light hits something or... For, for, or just... For are, me, it's it's light. I look at light. Light, me too. You know? so, Everything's about light yeah, for me too. For, yeah, for, for me, sure. absolutely. And, and I think that's, you know, what I definitely do. So you're saying is light is kind of what gets that that kind mindset of, kind of going, right? And, for sure and it does. Because yep. I'm going to bring up an image here that you did of a wedding, I think just this past summer, if I'm not, uh, if yes. I'm not mistaken, correct? <laughs> yes. Um, of course, the, uh, I mean, we have Star Wars, the, new, the newest episode coming out soon anyway, so how timely is this? Yes. Go into how this kind of came about, because again, you know, it's well, a fun image. Well, I'm a Star Wars fan. Yes. I am not, like, I'm not hardcore like these people. Yes. Where... <laughs> <clears throat> their house, their toaster is a Vader toaster, <laughs> and like they are very Star Wars oriented. Yeah. Uh, this image was taken not with this in mind at all. It was they wanted to get a Star Wars one where they were kind of holding hands and looking out. We were cut so short on time. We didn't. We didn't get that shot where I could like include lightsabers and like a whole theme. Yep. So as I was culling through the images, this one was shot from really far away. I knew I wanted this big sweeping landscape photo because it has the bridge and the gazebo and the little lake. This was taken at, um, at the Orchard View Weddings and Conference Center in Ottawa. Yep. And as I was culling through, I was like, oh, this, this, this could work. This is the one, yeah. This is the one that could work. Yeah. So, 
And yeah. it, is, it's, it's, it is always fine. It, it, it is always fun to do that because when you are going through those images and knowing what your client wanted, right? And you knew these two people were like huge yeah. Star Wars fan. You ran out of time, but you went through that image. You saw it, and right away that creativity it sparked in the head. You just you're like, I know what I can do now. Like it's yes. you know. And I and, do, and I don't know how to explain <coughs> that. I just I just knew that I could do something with it. Yeah. So. It just works, and I bet you the client was like loved it. Yeah, I like bet you they just, absolutely loved it. Yeah, they both they both loved it. Yeah, it's, and I love it too. It's it's nice. I love doing composite work. So. Yeah, well, it's comping cool. comping is uh, is composition. Comp doing a composite is is amazing. It's time consuming, and you know um, that's something that I think later on we'll we'll kind of do some things about. But um, well, and it's difficult. It, you it know? is. And now with where I am, I prefer I prefer difficulty. Yeah. You know, and that's why I prefer wedding photography and boudoir photography over any other photography because yeah. I find them to be the hardest. Weddings, absolutely, right? Because weddings, is, it's all time limit, right? Weddings is all, it's all dependent on how reactive you are to the situations that are happening around you. Weddings are... The light's always definite. changing. Yeah. Then there's the people aspect, yeah. right? You have to keep people happy and yeah. moving throughout the day and you're always, mm. there's always things going wrong and you're always putting out fires and I like... Like, I like that. Yeah, it does make it so. enjoyable, absolutely. So now I'm gonna go on to my last kind of bonus question for, um, for today. We're gonna bring up um, what you consider right now kind of your favorite creation at this time of your, your career, right? Is, is this one my amazing favorite. image. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I love um, this. And this one, you're gonna, like, I want you to tell me about this one. Go into, right. not necessarily how it came about, but what you, like, how you did the image. Like, so, the whole thing that sparked me photographing elite athlete Mark Prudhomme, um, I've known Mark, I was in Afghanistan with Mark way back in 2006, 2007, we're both royals from the Royal Canadian Regiment. Um, I was just a little bit further ahead of my career th than him, um, just because I'd, I'd been in a little bit longer, yeah. but we all knew Mark. He was an elite swimmer, he was like, crazy fit, super nice guy. So everybody knew who Mark was. And once I got out of the military, I never really heard too much about Mark. Like he was, he always had his finger in something. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends posted something with Mark about him going to the military world games, which is a really big deal. It's like the okay. Olympics for all the military, the military across the world. It's, it's a huge deal. And the media did not cover it well enough. So I had a little tiny lull in my schedule. In the, the and, summer? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Actually, no, there was no lull. But I <laughs> needed to make space. He was heading to Korea in three days. Yeah. By the time I got a hold of him, and I'm like, okay, Mark, I have this really great idea. I want to get some like fitness shots of, like, of you, you with your bike because he was going as a triathlete um, with swimming and with the bike, we didn't have enough time to get any kind of pool shots. Yeah. So we got this shot. I also got him in his dress uniform. I got him in his combats. I got him, you know, shirt off for the ladies mm -hmm. and, um, you know, full combat gear with face paint. So I wanted to show you know, an elite athlete, Canadian soldier. Yep. The only shot that I'm missing is a shot of him and his family, yeah. right? Because, you know, he's got, um, mm. you know, he's a dad. Yeah. So that's the only shot that was missing to show the whole picture. Yep. So when I came to this photo, I just wanted to show that, like, the grit. Yeah. And because him and I, like, we're, like, obviously he's very patriotic, right? He's, he's got a Canadian flag tattooed on his chest. Yep. I have one on my arm. Um, I just wanted to make it like very dark, very serious, very, you know, patriotic with the reds and, yeah. and the, the grittiness, the grittiness really kind of adds to the photo too, right? Like I find you've got, you got the two tones happening. You have it, you know, shaded out on the one side and then you have very patriotic red and white on, on the right hand side, but it does, it shows there's something about that image that really shows you know, uh, what he's kind of been through. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, no, no, it's, you it know what sense? I mean? And not many people can, <clears throat> can look at you like that, yeah. right? Like, like that look in his eye is what, is, is what makes the photo. It has nothing to do with me, no. other than the fact that I pulled that look out of, out him, of him, right? Which is half the battle as a photographer yes, too, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you need, you absolutely. need to be able to pull 
ex well, it's expression, right? And if you, uh, you need to be able to pull expression. So yeah. I was lucky enough to pull that expression out of them and and again, that's and a, I just love everything about it. That's yeah. another another great, great shot uh, from from the ones that we're looking at here today. Yeah. So now we're going to go into more about you know the photography side of stuff. So my first thing, how long have you been? A, how long have you been a photographer? Uh, like four years. Four years. Yeah. So like 2011-ish kind of thing. Yeah. I w was like taking and making photographs yep. before then, yep. but like before I was like really like serious and, yep. and, and charging people money yep. for, for, for photographs. So. And again, we kind of already started, we kind of already answered this question about how you got started. It was really kind of the kids and, you know, yep. capturing their moments and, and everything like that. <clears throat> and the next one is, you know, what's in your bag right now? All right. Well, uh, I shoot Nikon cameras. Yes. As well as I, I use unlike our other friend, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, you know, what? I, I, I I don't even care no. if you shoot Nikon, Canon, <clears throat> Leica, or like it it it, it doesn't Sony. matter. Or Sony, <laughs> yeah, or or iPhone six, it doesn't matter. Doesn't I've matter. seen, but I I myself shoot Nikon just because I have so much money invested. Yeah, um, I shoot with the D eight ten. I have a backup D eight hundred. The lenses I use most are my twenty four to seventy my 85 millimeter, my 50 millimeter. Yeah. Um, now if you could only have one of those lenses in your bag, what would be your must have? Not, not your must have lens that you want, but the one that's in your bag. Your if I have. could, if I had to go out and shoot with just one, just lens, one lens, I would use the 50. The 50? Yeah, it has to be the 50. Okay. So. And then, you know, this is kind of a, again, it's, it's really only photography related, but what do you feel is the most important post, -pro -pro -post processing technique? The most important post-processing technique is paying attention to detail. Paying attention to detail? Okay. And I find not enough people do it. Have you ever, like how many amazing, beautiful photographs have you seen? And like one of the people in the photographs has like a big red zit. Yeah. Or razor burn. Yeah. Or a big dog hair on their arm. Yeah. Or like the fluff on the shirt, right? Like you know. Or the fluff on the shirt. <laughs> I know. I, I, I know, know. I know that when you're at a wedding, you always have your lint brush with you, and you're sure. ready to get rid of that because you. I know. I mean, as it's a, all about the detail, yeah. and that's the difference between, and that's really the difference between the pros and the amateurs. Yeah. It's a polished, finished product that should be able to be hung as a thirty by forty on your wall. Yeah, absolutely. And go big or go home. Yeah, it's you know? it's just and it's it's. It's subtractive, yep. right? Like usually when I edit a photo, an edit isn't accounting for what it should have looked like in camera, like adjusting for color and exposure and cropping, like that's not even really editing. That's no. kind of fixing what you didn't get right in camera. Yep. So the editing is taking out the little lints or the mosquitoes or the you know stuff that's distractive to the eye. And yep. the one question I get asked by a lot of photographers is like, like how do you get the eyes to like pop or like how do you make the eyes look like that? And it's like, I don't do anything. Yeah. I, I erase everything else that your eye usually gets pulled to. When yeah. you look at a photograph that has lint and a bird and the stop sign in the back, your eye will go to the eye because it just does, yeah. but then it wanders. Yeah, absolutely. Where if there's nowhere for it to wander to, it's, you know, the, the impact is there. Yeah. So for me, the biggest thing for post-processing is detail. Detail. That's a good, that's a good answer. Accentuating the good details and subtracting distractions. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's a good answer. And then uh, this is, this is a, a, another great one um, that I don't actually get asked very, very often, but um, which photographers have really influenced, influenced you um, and kind of influenced your, your thinking and maybe your style? Well, the photographers that have taken the most amount of my money <laughs> are... Sue Bryce, yep. who's amazing. Yes, I, gi I, gi I give her all my all my money. And you know, just if you ever watch any of Sue Bryce's stuff, just like the the outfits she comes up with sometimes. I mean, she makes a lot of her own stuff, or she I know. Like, her team makes a lot of their own stuff, right? I mean, just like, I mean, I mean, you and I would both wish we could do that every yeah. day, but yeah, well, absolutely. it's not even the fact <laughs> that she makes her own stuff. It's <laughs> she's an amazing photographer. Yeah. She's an amazing person. She does a lot of good. Yeah. And I try to do a lot of good as much as I can. It's mostly from her. Yeah. She's all about uh, 
like flattering, flattering women and yeah. how to flatter women and pull those poses and get them to look at you in the way that they must yeah. to make a, a beautiful photograph. So you got Sue Bryce. Who Sue else? Bryce for, for portraits and more like my boudoir stuff. Yeah. Um, I just love everything she says and does. And for weddings, I really love Jasmine Starr and uh, Susan Stripling. Okay. They, uh, again, both of them take all my money too. <laughs> like that, that's where I get my education from. Like I go to school on Sue Bryce's website or Jasmine Starr's website yeah. because they're at the level now where they're selling educational videos and tutorials yeah. and they're always willing to share a share. lot of information too. So. And that's, you know, that's a really good thing, sharing that information. Um, it, it's, that's a good part about building our, our community, especially as photographers, For sure. right? Yeah. I mean, sharing that information and, and, and that passion with others so that they can learn is just, yeah. it's an amazing thing to do, right? So. Yeah, and I try to do it <coughs> the same way they do it. They share a lot of like important smaller stuff for free, yep. you know, like which I do as well. But then, like the bigger, more intensive stuff, then you know you, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Like absolutely. you charge for your time, you charge for the time. I mean, yeah, you, and you your can't expertise. Do it for free, right? Well, I mean, for sure, it took me years and thousands of dollars to learn all this stuff. So I'll absolutely. pass it on. And and then yeah, uh, nice. I want to end with, if you can, um, what would you say would be the funniest moment you ever had in a photo shoot? <laughs> Funniest things that ever come out of photo shoots. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with. Well, there's uh, there's two. One of them is. Actually, no, I won't even talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do have to be kind of safe. I think I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so so we'll be totally safe. So it's little babies projectile shitting <laughs> all over their yes. parents. And yes. I, I actually have outtakes of photos where it's like whizzing across the screen and like splattering all over dad. And that, know? that, that there Ab is. Absolutely hilarious. That so, is a good one actually. Yeah. Projectile, yeah. See the peeing ones are fun and they're funny, but not like, uh, not like the poop ones. Those are, uh, those are always hilarious. Cause I always warn them ahead of time. There is a 100% chance that your baby is going to pee, poop, or puke all over my stuff. Yeah. And it's fine. Yeah. I know they're going to, yep. and all the stuff is washable, because they're always very apologetic. Oh, I'm so sorry. So don't worry about it. It's going to happen. And then it does. And it's always best when it happens. To them. Well, when I have the camera out, too. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true, so. right? You do, you do want that. So before we end, um, we got one more image here I want to, uh, I just want to show, because I, I, I like it. The, the lighting is, is absolutely fantastic. Um, the couple looks, you know, they, they look very happy, you know. Um, so why, why did you bring this image with you today? Well, I love this image. Yeah. And although I do replace skies in dull background uh, photographs from time to time, like if there's a photo worthy that I think is going to be printed pretty large, yep. I'll, just, I'll just do it. This photo was taken at an engagement session, and it's actually a combination of two photographs. So the camera's on the tripod, I expose once for them. Yep. And if I expose for them, then uh, the sky's blown You're gonna out. You're going to be completely blown it's, out. Yep. It's just Absolutely. white. So then the next photograph, I expose for the sky. Yep. And then, of course, they're black and yep. you can't see them. So you just add the two photographs together. Yep. And so almost yeah, an HDR, but not quite an HDR. Right? It's like it's like a fake yeah. HDR, you know. So more like an overlay, right? Where yeah, yeah, like more like an overlay, but using the sky that's good. there. Um, if yeah. if if that wasn't an amazing sky that was there, I would have just taken that white background with yeah. the overexposed back and replaced it with one of the skies I had taken previously. Yeah. But because the sky was awesome, um, I like to use the sky if it's there, yeah. and and that was a great one. And absolutely. And they were just too easy to work with. They were uh, like just so in love that I had to do very little. Yeah. So. And, and, it, and it shows, right? You can really see it. You can see that it's not forced expressions in the face, right? You can really, you can feel that kind of thing. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming by. Uh, I enjoyed, you know, having the chat with you. And uh, I hope everybody enjoyed uh, watching and, and kind of learning a little bit about Brian and, and his creative spark. So thanks again for coming by. All right. Thanks. Thank you.